Hello, welcome. Have you had a good week? Are you well? I hope everything's fine with you. And you're looking forward to the next part because this is where things are starting to happen and the model's going to start looking like a P51 Mustang and stuff like that. So, the battery cover. Now, here's the battery cover from the ME109 or the BF109, depending on your taste. Make a comment. You never know. You might want to have an, a, a, you know, a stand-up argument with me. Um, if you want to, that's fine. I don't mind. Um, but essentially, you're going to copy this. Now, the dimensions are not exactly the same. You'll see that one is different to the other. Okay, but the construction is identical. So, you have this back piece here, same as here. You have the middle part here, same as here. And you'll see that the front is slightly different. There you go. Uh, but the makeup is identical. So what you have to take into consideration, it's lucky that I've got this really, that you have to extend the top. Okay, because that's going to sit over bulkhead one. So please bear that in mind. You already should have yours looking like this. Okay, and that's what we're going to do now. So all we've got to do here put the sides on so I'm just saying I told you that that's going to overhang I told you I told you I told you it's your own fault if you don't do it okay so put that to one side so what I did was I took the off cut from the uh, other sheet from doing the um, the front fuzz so we already had this angle here so I didn't have to cut it and I just then cut the other end to length and if I offer this up like this here you can see it's slightly oversized which is what you want because I think you'll be very lucky if you get this sheeted up in one go so what you do is you oversize it and you sand it down to the correct size so the operation is identical to what we've done with the rest of the fuzz so what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue along here let that set wet the panel and then bend it over okay so that's what we're going to do and i'm going to do that off camera to save time so while you were away having your cup of tea whatever it is this is how that ended up so just doing a trial fit there that goes in and you're always going to have some sort of gap because you you need to get it off and on so you know you can't make it invisible well I suppose you could make it invisible but be a better person than I uh, anyway it's not really particularly desirable so that's that's what you should end up with so going to the other side let's see okay um, you're left with that so what I've done I've preempted cutting this and I'll show you how I did it just now so let's take that out okay put the fuzz to one side okay so what you do you get your, your full sheet and you hold it on a flat surface as, as shown here and you offer up the sheet now you want to make sure that you have a, an overhang at the front and something of an overhang at the back. So it's, it's a bit of judgment as to how much overhang you allow. And then trying to keep my fingers out of it as much as I can. You hold it as it is, get your pencil and draw the line. Okay, you can bend it round, you can bend it round. It'll, it'll come round and then you you're left with a pencil mark and that's where you cut it and then you've already got the automatic got the overhang at the front so 
best way of uh, showing you this. Which way around? Just that way. It goes that way around. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try and do this in uh, in real time as much as I can. Um, I'm just conscious of using up uh, time, really, when you want to be awake making a video that's approximately uh, 30 minutes duration. So, now then, saying that, here's my glue. Okay, and I'm going to add that glue along this edge. Now I'm using thick cyano here and what I may do is pause the video to let the glue set or maybe not. We will see. Make sure it's all all the way along okay and as usual I usually stick my fingers to it making sure you go it the right way around you then now you may have to excuse me because I, I need to do this right. Oh, oh here we go. Offer it up. So you got that overhang right flat. There you go. I, I, I can't really not get my hands in the way, so you'll have to forgive me for that. But basically, it's getting it. Whether the overhang is correct, and then just letting that, holding it to the cat, the uh, battery cover, and just letting it dry. So, anyway, ah, a bit more history. Um, famous fighter pilots in Mustangs. Well, there was uh, Colonel C. E. Bud Anderson. And he was a triple ace during uh, World War II. We did two tours in World War II. Um, he scored 16 victories in his P-51 called the Old Crow. Um, this is quite a well-known chap, actually, in the Mustang fraternity. And uh, obviously an American, you know. Obviously the, the British had the Mustangs. They ordered some Mustangs. The Ridgeback version, the original versions, uh, and they camouflaged them as they normally would. You know, they're all the British Randalls on and everything. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, the odd things that actually stood out with this uh, Colonel Anderson was the fact that his aircraft air, air, aircraft had no single hits. Nobody hit him with anything. How about that? Right, that's on. Okay, we're gonna have to trim this at the bottom. But that will come. That will come. So you need to make sure that's well stuck down. Very well stuck down. Now, the trick is, besides wetting it, is you've got to run a bead of glue along here. All that area, um, you know, because when you come to sand it down, it's you're going to end up with like a, a, a paper sort of edge to it, and you and you're going to have to at some point you might have to fill that in. But anyway, right. So let's get some water on it. Okay. As I've said before, one of the Good things about wetting this down is is that in fact you can see it if you if you get the light right um, the fibers stand up so when you come to sand it you take all the top of the fibers off and it's, it goes really really smooth now you can afford to bend that over and you're just checking it as you go along and that quite readily bends over now it does that quite quickly because you want to make sure it's well stuck at the bottom probably do with a bit more glue on there actually but anyway uh, so we'll just we'll just hold it like that for a minute 
let it get its shape. There's no need to trim off this just yet. Just let, let it bend over. Let, it's, let it use, lend itself to it. So what else? Um, so few pilots in history have um, spent more time in the P-51 than Bud, Bud Anderson. So a very well experienced P-51 pilot. Um, he flew 116 missions uh, and he had a great fondness for his, his ground crew. He, he really appreciated what they did for him and looking after the aircraft. And indeed, this was the same with the British ground crews. They um, they looked on the airplane as it was their airplane and they just lent it out, you know, let him borrow it to go and knock other fighters out of the air. And their attitude was that they share they share the kill. So whatever he, you know, if he not went out of the air, it was it was a team effort, not just the pilot. But well, anyway, it's a quite an endearing little um, story uh, because when he came back to do his second tour, he, I think he had the same grain crew, I think. Um, but anyway, uh, he was, uh, it was 1944, there was snow on the ground, the Battle of the Bulge and all this. And um, he was flying his, his uh, Mustang, but they, they camouflaged it with green. And he said, we just stood out against the snow. And, you know, he said, that wasn't a very healthy sort of thing. So when he landed, he said, when we, when we do the next major overhaul or maintenance on the aircraft, can you paint the, the aircraft silver? And he thought, no, no more about it. Anyway, the next day he goes to fly and they rubbed all the paint off, made it silver overnight. Uh, you know, and he said he brought a look to his throat about how good the ground crews were and how much they wanted to look after him, not just the, the plane, you know. So he must have been a nice enough guy if they were prepared to do that for him. I would say so. And that's bending over quite nicely now. So that's without any pressure on it. So, yeah. So that will go over. Now, we've got to sort of bend it back a little bit. And where's the glue gone? There it is. You're going to need some thin sino as well. So as before, you glue it um, from the inside. Like this. best you can. If you can get it from the other side then that's great. Now you've got to get this this ridge here and that's quite important. You've got to fill that all up with glue. Okay, it's all the way along that line. That's got to stick down, that has. Okay, I'll put the lid back on the glue. Right, now you just hold it there. Just hold it there. And you'll see the glue oozing out in one or two places. And all you've got to do, get one of your lollipop sticks, whatever you have at hand, just go along and squeeze it out like that. Now, as I said before, I've run out of elastic bands, so I'm having to do it this way. I haven't got another method right now. Elastic bands are great. As we say in Birmingham and the UK, lazy bands. 
Marzi bands. There you go. Get all the excess out. Bend it right over. See that? Bend it right over like that. It's got to take that shape. All the this is scrap here, but you've got to use that leverage. Don't forget about the front and so forth. Keep a tight grip on there. Just using your hands. And you just got to basically wear it until it's dry. So what I'll do is I'll turn off the camera when I know it's well I'll turn the camera off now and I'll turn it back on when I know it's dry and I'll just show you the next bit. Okie dokie, see you in a minute. Okay, well the glue is dried, it's taken on the form, front and back. The front looks as though we could do it a bit more sticking down there, but we'll trim this off in a minute and uh, see how it fares. So you're going to have to trim the bottom first and I always find the best way to take large off, well large off, large chunk off is to gently run the knife down it, not too close to the bottom edge. This is just so it saves you a whole lot of sanding. I will not do any more than that. Take your coarse block, don't go mad at it and just check it every so often. This won't take very long I hope. Oops. There's a reason why you're doing the bottom first, which will become self-evident in a little while. Take a bit at a time, or if you like a bite at a time, take a bite at a time. And this is purely for guidance, it's nothing else. Too much of. 
Oop. really to get that edge spot on you should be sanding it by just getting the excess off but it just goes to show you what a rough job you can make with a knife <clears throat> get rid of these bits here out of my way and out of my elbow So you see it doesn't take too much just by sanding it. So this now allows you to come to the front side like this. Grab your pencil. Okay, holding that sheet down with your thumb. Mark. That very front edge where it meets formal one. Take this out of the shot just for a second. Just one second. Okay, it's just that I couldn't I couldn't do that at the right angle and still be in shot. So what you ended up with is that pencil mark there. And now you know where the front's got to lie. Okay. So the next bit you still got to trim this back a bit more, but we wanna run the knife down here ever so carefully so what we're going to do find the pencil now we're just going to take a guess mark at the moment mark it there want it to be about here okay Let's give it a rough start Don't try and cut it all the way through in one go. Just score it down. Not too much pressure. Otherwise you'll end up cutting the, the balsa wood underneath. And it just wants to come apart. Ever so light, light, light pressure. So you can see where the, the glue's bled through. This will come off, it's not a big, big deal getting that off. Sunday. 
Okay, and what I will do, I will sand this part here, I'll sand the top, and we'll do a, a trial fit. See you in a second or two. So with some careful sanding, you can get this to fit quite well. Uh, the front is a little bit flaky, but that's okay. I can put some filler in there, sand that down even more. This has got to be sanded so it, it sort of catches your, your, your nail. So that's got to be sanded. The top, now, this is a little bit problematic because you're trying to copy this profile here. So what I may do is put some thin glue down here and uh, squeeze it down and then sand it to shape. So by this point, this should now be fitting. The profile should be okay at the front, like that. The dark side, uh, dark sides. The dark inflection there is just the glue, and it's just a case of putting some 800 grade paper over it. Now, now that you've got it to fit, what you need to do is just sand this here. It's higher here than it is there. So it's probably best to take this out and lightly sand it with the 800 and then you get the profile right. That will fit in nice. Um, let's see if we can get the camera on there like that. See, so everything should be looking all nice square on fitting. You're going to struggle to get a perfect fit. So I'm hoping the film will take up some of this gap here. At least that's the plan anyway. So on to the next bit. Right, so for the tail end, this hole here is for the, uh, the snake to go through. You've got to take, uh, I'm going to just double check this. I think it's 21. Yeah, it is 21. Right, this is 21, this is 21. You have to sand a sharp edge to make them meet at the end here. Glue that one in. And actually, what I did, when I come to put the other one in, to glue it here, I actually put a clamp on there like that. This forces the top ends over because you'll find if you put them in straight they're outside of the fuselage here so they bend in. You could wet them, I didn't wet them but you, you could wet them to go in and then once they're all in um, and glued in I used uh, zap glue to get them in and then I mixed up some 5 minute epoxy and just put them in the join here to make, make a really strong you know joint there um, and then of course I put the caliper back on let it dry sand it down so this is what you should end up with now this side is slightly higher so rather than build this up I sanded that down I had to take about a millimeter off something like that and I was just checking it with a uh, the spirit level. Oh, here we go. Checking it with the spirit level, and uh, managed to get it right. So, and then the little gap that's there, you just put a little bit of filler in, and then sand it all off. Now, I have started with the front end here. Um, what number was that? Number eleven. There's in here, and before you put number eleven, in, there's number ten. Just behind, so put number 10 in first, then number 11. Now, I'm going to have to put this phone on the stand for a second. Right, this might be a little bit fiddly for me, but you've got part 13, and this goes at the front here. Now, when I first looked at this, there's no front to it um, as such. And I thought, well, hang on, that looks a bit open. So I've got the ring that goes at the front. Uh, I think it's part number 15, which goes on there. And then holding it, I don't know whether you can see if my finger in the, fingers in the way or not, 
I decided, well, that looks a bit odd. So I've got the nose cone, put the nose cone on, and actually it does fit. So don't be too afraid to tackle that. Now I have to make my mind up now about how I'm going to go forward with this because um, it's been a while since I've done one of these and I'm trying to remember how I did the last ones. Um, I think what I did was, I think I glued it into place uh, and then did the opposite side, put the bottom then the top on and then shaped it while it was on the model. And then what you do is you, you use this wedge shape here. And what's that's, what that is for is that goes on the inside there like that something like that anyway and then let me see if I get this right yeah it goes like that and then when you add the the other side on it gives you more wood on the inside so when you come to carve it and shape it you'll you'll go through that joint and they've just got an extra bit of wood there to uh, to save you basically so that go, yeah, that'll go in like that so get this right now there you go so you'll end up with that yeah so you just you just have an extra wood on the inside because you're you're going to sand all the way through that joint to get the right shape so this this is just some extra wood so you just don't end up with a big gap in the joint. It'll make sense when you come to you, you come to do it, or maybe the next bit when I, I start to do it, it'll it'll come right. You'll you'll see. Probably doesn't make sense right now. So that's where we are, and I'm going to turn the camera off now and uh, have a bit of a think. Angle, and then I'm going to cut a. Just watching a bit of cliff there. Um, it didn't sing any songs though. Oh well, not to worry. Um, okay, so on with what we're going to do. I actually delayed putting any of these blocks on because I suddenly thought to myself, hang on a minute. I've got to put the speed controller in here. There. And I may not be able to get ready access to it unless I make this a hatch, which I don't particularly want to do. So I put the speed controller in and then I thought to myself, well, I put the speed controller in. How do I know if these three cables are in the correct position? So I thought, OK, I'll go the whole hog. I'll get the battery out. I'll connect the battery up, put the speed controller in, put the receiver in there. I'm about to put a little bit of wood in there just just to hold the receiver. So then I fired it up and guess what? first go not only does it work it's going in the right direction so i'm not saying you should do this but this is what i did i thought well just in case uh, i don't want to get myself caught out and, and and say to myself i didn't think about it so it may be well worth your while having a think about it and uh maybe doing the same now what i have done is i put the velcro in you may have noticed during some of the previous videos I'd, I'd already put this in only because I thought well I need the uh, space to do it and it now seems like a good time so I just did it you can just about see the speed controller under there that's a 40 amp by the way and the cables just go through there and the way you do it is you you color code them we can number them if you want to you color code them and if the motor's going the wrong way you just swap two of the leads over and then you check it again make sure it's going the right way and then you can carry on so what i may do is actually leave the motor in place and everything else i'll just take the battery out and and carry on from there really so it's a bit unusual to do that but um yeah why not why not so there you are. So I think what I will do is, because this video has now run over 30 minutes already, I'm going to put these on in the next part. So I will now thank you very, very much for your time, your generosity. I hope you're going to have a, a good week while you're waiting for the next episode. And um, 
Say goodbye. Let the clip after the last word. Great you do rotor blades. That. That's per the plan, so there you go. Incidentally, just goes on the bottom. <laughs> He's, he's got my top. he's got my logo here. This is what you drill through when you've got your centre gravity. <laughs> okay, brain. well, ladies and gents, oh, thank you nightmare. very much for your time, and I look forward to uh, seeing you next week. And um, be safe. Cheerio. Bye bye.